Hi, Karthik. Good evening. Okay. I think uh, it's time to start for today's class. Um, let us see if they join. Let them join. So, Nithya, today we are in day 36. Basically, we are going to start here. Um, we have covered up, our, we have completed all the topics in the collection framework. So we have uh, dived into collection framework in and out of all the frameworks within collections. And today we are going to start with multi-threading. Okay. So multi-threading is one of the area within Java, which can, uh, you can easily identify uh, the difference of uh, the knowledge that what the Java developers has because most of the people not willing to learn about multi-threading, but I always strongly recommend to have in-depth knowledge in multi-threading, which will definitely help you out to uniquely uh, define for Java developer. Okay, so today we are going to talk about these three topics and we will continue the same in the upcoming classes. So before we go into multi-threading, Nithya, do you have any question regarding any topics so far, whatever we discussed in Java or anything? Mm -hmm. Want to discuss? No, Karthik, as of now, no doubt, Karthik. If I have anything, I let you know. Okay, okay. okay let's get started. Um, so today, when we are talking about multi-threading, so these are the, this is the agenda for today's class in day thirty-six. So first, we are going to talk about multi-threading. So multi-threading is a big concept within Java, and uh, first and foremost thing is we are going to talk about so what are the items which we are going to learn in this class and uh, when i say in this class in our entire course series so what is really important for a developer to know about multi-threading okay so which is nothing but a syllabus all right so first we are going to talk about what are the list of items that we are going to learn within multi-threading area and we are going to see in and out of it so first we are going to talk about the syllabus and then we are going to learn about what do you mean by task what do you mean by multitasking and what are different types of multitasking we have and what are the you know process based uh, multitasking what do you mean by thread based multitasking and what is a real world example for each right and then we are going to slowly dive into threading concept in, when i say thread we are going to see how to define a thread in java and also we are going to see what are the different types of uh, or different ways to create a threads in Java. Okay. So as I said earlier, like let's start with the syllabus, what we're going to learn with respect to multi-threading. So um, when I say multi-threading, um, before we get into multi-threading, uh, let's say whatever we are trying to do in a Java program, right? As a developer, we are trying to achieve something and we are expect our program to execute something and we want to expect some output out of it, right? Which means like either we are giving some input and do some operation over there and getting some output, right? So in order to do that particular uh, job, right, we should have some kind of a mechanism which is going to be responsible to execute that particular piece of work for us, right? When I say like in general a program, so program can be categorized, right? Within the program means like you will have multiple methods, you have multiple variables, you are defining a lot of things, right? So we are going to talk about what do you mean by task? What do you mean by multitasking? What do you mean by uh, process-based, thread-based? And what do you mean by multi-threading? That is what you're going to talk about in the interesting class. And we are going to learn about what are the different ways that we can define threads. So one of the way is by extending the thread class. The other way is by implementing runnable interface. So by this time, we know what do you mean by class, what do you mean by interface, right? And what are the real advantage if you try to extend a class? If you try to implement an interface, what is the real advantage? We know it. So in order to define a thread, what you have to do is either you have to extend a thread class or implements runnable interface. And then we are going to slowly get into see what are the different threads we have in our program and how to get and set the name of a thread. So every thread will have a name. We will see what methods we have to use to know what is the current thread, what is running, and uh, what do you, how to set a, uh, how to set a name for a given thread. And also we are going to get into priorities, which means 
whenever i say multi threading so which means like more than one thread you are going to deal with in your program right so it's not necessarily like all the threads has to execute uh with a different timing like you have to you, you can have a feature that you can set okay i want to execute this thread first and then the uh, like next thread right so you can able to prioritize the threads whichever you guys are creating it so we are going to see in and out of it how to set the priorities and how it will work in the real time world also um there is a mechanism that you can also able to stop the execution of a particular thread so whenever i say stop which means let's say you can stop it for some time or you can uh, make another thread to wait for the other thread like kind of mechanism you can define with the help of three methods we have yield join and slip so i'm going to talk about uh, all these methods in a very layman terms so you won't uh, forget in your life meaning like you don't need to worry about uh, remembering these concepts and the other beautiful concept within multi threading is synchronization okay so whenever i say synchronization which means like uh, you are making your class as a synchronized class which means like if your class is trying to execute by more than one thread how you are going to allocate your resource which is nothing but your class to those threads that is what it means synchronization it's a very very beautiful concept we will get deeper into it and also we are going to see how the threads are communicate each other right so see you, let's say if you have more than one thread when it talks right or, or do something so unless otherwise if you don't talk then it kind of like uh, most probably you will get some kind of deadlock situation where like one thread is waiting for some other thread and other thread is waiting for this thread to execute right so we are going to see how a thread can communicate to another thread which is nothing but uh, inter thread communication with the help of wait method notify method and notify all okay similar to this one yield join and slip i will explain these three concepts with respect to uh, layman terms where you will won't uh, forget uh, the concepts and uh, this is a very basic question what do you mean by deadlock in java and how you can able to resolve it or how it will occur right all the three aspects people may ask me in interview so deadlock is something but a lock without a key which means that two threads are looking for the same resource and both of the threads doesn't have the key and each thread is waiting for each other right to release so that's where the deadlock is we will get deeper into it and also we'll see what is a daemon threads so daemon threads are nothing but like a background threads let's say if you want to run something in the background which means like you can execute it so another typical example i can think about is uh, it's not actually thread like one uh, it's kind of a process let's say the typical example let's say you are uh, listening some music in the youtube right and uh, if you are not a premium customer to youtube if you try to execute or try to play the songs in the background it won't get executed right which means something like only for premium customers only you can able to play the youtube music like music in youtube app uh, in the in the background that is kind of like they have did it through daemon threads and also the final topic is something like enhancements in multi threading so in the real world uh, whenever you try to implement multi threading in your project you will be using this kind of framework right so in order to understand this framework how to use it you should know all these ways or all these basic concepts and uh, and we'll be using like all the enhancements how to use it and how to use it in your project like we are going to see the framework is something but executor framework okay so let's move on to the current topic for today uh, any questions uh, nitya no kartik like uh, yeah so end of this course basically this end of this particular topic uh, multi threading section you will definitely feel more comfortable and you can always be uh, you know more on top of it with respect to multi threading okay that's the goal of this particular section all right so now let's talk about task and multi task and what are different types of task okay so before we get into multi threading as a basic concepts right let me start with a uh, paint so let's say you are buying a laptop right and your laptop is having some jvm or what of the ram memory you have right so what you have is nothing but ram right is nothing but random access memory so which means like whatever this ram is used for in your computer once your computer turns off and then you turn it on those process won't be repeated which means like those process won't be there right which means those process are able to 
live in the system only as long as this ram is live right so typical example let's say you open on a browser and you are uh, seeing something in your system and unfortunately your laptop gets turned off right which means like whatever the process you do, you are doing it it will be turned off right so let's say you have a ram in the inside ram you have a jvm jvm sits within the ram right which is nothing but a java virtual machine so what we're trying to do here is you are writing a program in java right and this program the goal of the program is to something to execute by the computer right which is nothing but you are trying to uh, define some set of statements to the program using that one you are trying to execute some process right so that is nothing but a task right you are assigning some task to the computer to make it happen right at the same time if you want to execute multiple tasks at the same time okay let's say so when i say same time which means let's say you want to execute some uh, perform computer to operate or execute some operation at the same time by multiple tasks right which is nothing but multitasking okay multitasking nothing but executing the multiple tasks simultaneously which is something but a parallel processing where we can where we can call it as a parallel processing so the reason why i'm talking about multitasking first before got into multi threading is that even the layman terms even like no one knows about like multi threading at all they should be able to understand from where this concepts came from okay so from ram we have a jvm through jvm only you are actually creating whatever the program you are trying to execute it is going to be executed under jvm right and whatever the task you are defining in your program that is nothing but a task right and if you have more than one task in your program and if you want to execute that one that is nothing but multi threading sorry multi tasking and that multi tasking works simultaneously it's nothing but in parallel right so in general we can define the multi tasking with two aspects okay one is process oriented other one is thread oriented okay so whenever i say process oriented a typical example i can say um first i will talk with a uh, layman terms okay let's say you can see think about some music composer right the music director right so what they do is like uh, if they want to uh, create some album or some song right what they do is like uh, they want to use multiple instruments to come up with the final song the music right so what they do let's say they are using some keyboard or drums or what not right so if they using it so each instruments are separate and they are not dependent on each other but they can set their program on each instrument right which means like let's say keyboard when they play keyboard so what they want to program it they can able to do it and drums similarly similarly they can also do it but both are like not independent right so if i want to talk about the technical terms let's say you are writing a program let's say you are opening a eclipse and you start writing a program at the same time you are opening a chrome browser and you are going to youtube and you are learning something let's say let's just take channel videos or you are watching some movie or what not right or listening some music right so if you see here whenever you open a browser so jvm allocates not jvm like your computer processor allocates a processor id for that particular browser and on that particular process is responsible to execute the youtube channel or whatever you are doing it right at the same time if you open eclipse and within the eclipse if you try to write some java program so there is a separate process allocated for eclipse right so here if you see when you have youtube channel running or you are able to listen the music in the youtube channel in the chrome browser at the same time you are able to do some coding coding in the eclipse right because at the java not in, not in terms of java at a uh, computer level or the at the your laptop level at the at the processor level like cpu level there are two process id created like right? one process id is responsible to manage the browser the other process id is managed to is to manage the eclipse right so if you see here process based multitasking so here also you are doing multitasking right you are doing some program coding at the same time you are trying to listen something music right so this is this is nothing but like multitasking but here two process are involved right which means execute more than one task simultaneously but each task is a separate of the individual program what does it mean so chrome browser whatever you are doing it a particular process id is responsible for doing it that is separate program 
and whatever you are doing with eclipse there is another separate process which is responsible to manage the eclipse which is a separate forum all together right so which means like both are like separate programs all together so this is called process process based multitasking right now let's talk about thread based multitasking so thread based is nothing but let's say it will be similar but there is a there is a difference okay i will tell you what is it first let's go through the definition more than one task simultaneously where each task is a separate or individual part of the same program okay there is a difference here it is part of the same individual program here it is on the same program so here only one program is involved but multi threads here each program is responsible for each process okay so let's say a typical example i can say let's say you want to execute some or you want to implement some logic in your java program let's say you want to identify some keywords let's say i am giving some 10 files okay each file contains let's say millions of uh, words in it okay and my task is to identify how many times the word register exists in each file okay so in this case what we can do you want to check the keyword register stack in the file 1 and then you want to do the same thing in file 2 file 3 similarly up to file 10 right you want to do the same operation on 10 times or the 10 different files right so here what you can do let's say assume that let's say in order to search in one file it takes 5 minutes so for uh, checking the 10 files it will take 50 minutes right so if this is what it is there and you want to make it optimize or we want to tune this particular process how you can do that let's say instead of doing the searching one by one what you can do the operation is same right whatever you are doing is same if like you are trying to search in a file and you want to know how many times it appears in the file one and how many times appears in the file two similarly till file 10 you have to calculate right so what you can do here in your program you can create multiple threads okay each thread is something but a thread is something but responsible for a particular job right so here the job is to identify how many times the keyword register appear, register appears so what i can do i can create 10 threads each thread will be execute on each file let's say thread 1 thread 2 thread 3 let's say till thread 10 i create let's say i want to execute the same operation uh, on the file 1 by thread 1 and similarly on this file 2 by thread 2 so in this way if i do so what will happen is within 5 minutes i can able to complete my program or complete my requirement of finding how many times the keyword register appears in all the 10 files does it make sense is it going to be helpful if you do in this way right uh okay so other one is let's say video game right so let's say uh, the typical uh, layman terms video games right so the video game you have multiple objects right when when i say objects it's not related to java object it is nothing but uh, the components which you are trying to build in the game let's say you are uh, uh, you let's say you are uh, uh, playing some games like uh, uh, i don't i don't mention any games name here but whatever the game you are playing it so whatever the components which are built on top of the game it has to be synchronized and also it should be in terms of uh, should run at the parallel time right otherwise you won't see that actual real feel of the gaming right so that is one of the typical layman terms example and uh, another uh, typical uh, you know uh, technical example i can say about uh, any app servers right so there are n number of app servers we have in the market and let's say what is mean by app server application server is something but a server which is responsible to serve the application which means with when someone asks for any request the server has to respond back it's typically you can compare with a hotel right let's say you go to the hotel and you order something you are making a request and server is going to serve it similarly in our typical application whatever the java application or whatever is the the coding you are building it if you want to execute to the server you have to deploy your application to the server and that server's responsibility is to to serve it if someone asks the request in the request so a typical example let's say you are using gmail right so gmail is one of the typical application i can talk about so google has its own server where the gmail is uh, gmail application is installed let's say 
Gmail, the look and feel, or whatnot, right? Inbox, Compose, all those stuff, right? So that application is has been laid out, and that has been deployed in some some place within Google server, okay? And you are making a request by registering or logging in, and then you want to see all your emails, right? So in this case, what happens is you are making a request, and server is able to respond back. So whatever the emails which are responsible or which are sent to you, those emails are coming back in the response that is why you are able to see all the emails in your layout so what happens here is let's say if gmail i am able to access it and let's say if that particular server is waiting for completing my response back only then if it serves the other people then it means like other people can't able to access gmail which means like it will say gmail server will say hey i already have karthik is uh, working with us we will wait like that right so in this case what happens the application server will create a thread for each request let's say whenever i call or whenever i call gmail server i will the server will create one thread and that thread responsibility is to send back the response back similarly let's say you create a one uh, you you are making a request to your uh, gmail server when you try to log in that time your request is made from your browser to the gmail server so gmail server will create a thread to in order to respond to that particular request so this is how typically it works with respect to app servers you can also try to do the same thing in your local machine once you uh, start learning about app uh, tomcat kind of uh, web servers or app servers uh, like uh, jboss or what not so what you can do is you can install the server on your machine and you can do uh, hit the server let's say localhost 8080 uh, into browser uh, on the same server so if you see server like it has to create two threads to process those two requests okay so here the question the biggest question okay i i i can see what do you mean by multitasking process based thread based okay everything is fine but as a java developer what i need to know about multi threading and why do we need to know about multi threading okay so um what you need to know about multi threading is something but if you are in a position to make a program to work efficiently what are the items that you need to be known like let's say what are the topics which i am covering in this particular course those are very very important and mandatory in order for a developer to know and execute in the real time world okay and why you need to know, know learn about multi threading is nothing but a typical example which i mentioned before so if a particular application is doing some job and let's say if client wants to improve it or if you want to improve the performance right so there are multiple ways that you can improve the performance of a application as a whole as such but if you want to improve the application performance with respect to your coding with specific in terms of java coding then multi threading is one of the ways way yeah, that you can implement it so if i want to do some operation of let's say finding the register keyword with 10 files each file has millions of records or millions of words and if you want to do one by one it will take 50 minutes right but if you implement multi threading by creating some 10 threads so it can be done in 5 minutes it's very a drastic uh, performance improvement isn't it so that is how it's very very important for a developer to know or learn about multi threading and in our course we are going to have a hands on experience to learn about all the concepts whatever we are defined in our syllabus so that like you guys will feel that okay i am not only learn about multi threading with uh, um, theoretically also i know about coding that is what more important as respect to real time world scenarios so let's get into the next topic so is it clear nitya like what do you mean by process based and what do you mean by thread based in this case like we know what do you mean by multi threading by this thread okay so let's get into the topic okay so now we are going to see what do you mean by thread what do you mean by multi threading okay so when i was telling that uh, you are opening your browser and doing some activity in the youtube or whatever you do in the browser and at the same time if you open your eclipse and do some coding so there are two processes created right even if you go to your control panel and you can see what are different types of process for running in your machine right uh, otherwise you will see let's say if you are uh, you are opening something and if it doesn't uh, opens up what you guys do is like go to control panel and then you will try to see that particular application running and then you will um force quit it right which means like but you are killing the process so that that process is getting killed so whatever the application is running on that particular process is everything will be killed so with respect to thread 
it's not about separate process okay so i can say a thread is nothing but a subset of a process right but at the same time i can say a thread is nothing but a separate flow of execution to perform a particular job so whenever i say a particular job so when a programmer is like writing a program they can define a particular set of uh, task or particular set of uh, work to be done by your program that we can call it as a task or a job and that particular job can be run or executed by a separate flow that flow of execution we call it as a thread in java okay and multi threading more than one flow of execution which is running in the simultaneous way then we call it as a multi threading okay now it's very very important to understand how to define a thread in java okay so there are two ways that you can define a thread whenever i say define a thread it means like let's say you are writing a program and how i can make my program as a multi threaded environment right that's a question we have so in order to do that we have to define a thread let's say uh in the collection framework we have seen whenever you have a requirement to store more than one object then you can simply go for using some collection class or interface right so how you will decide based on the requirement and how you can able to store and manage the data based on the knowledge what we have based on the collection framework we will be choosing the right collection and we will be using it similarly in java for respect to uh, threading concept if you know how to handle the multi threading or how to create a threads and how to manage the threads then definitely if there is a requirement to tune your application in terms of coding wise then you can always look for opportunities to improve it with the help of multi thread so back to the defining a thread so you can able to define a thread into a aspect okay one way is by extends thread class other way of other way is to implement runnable interface okay so now i'm going to talk about extending using extends thread class okay so here what happens is let's say you are writing your class and you have main method okay and let it be okay let me explain this later and you are creating some class okay let's say i'm saying public class my own thread and i'm writing some logic okay so what we typically do so far is we are creating an object of a class and we are uh, using the object we are calling the methods or variables and we are defining uh, what not like what are the logics we want to execute we are doing it that's a typical uh, non multi threaded environment or single threaded environment uh, we can call it as right so whenever i want to make multi threaded environment what i should do here is i have to define a thread okay so in order to define a thread what you can do is whichever which of the class you think that that has to be executed simultaneously or which of the task that you think that has to be done simultaneously the task the task associated class has to be converted into a threaded class whenever i say threaded class a class which extends a thread class is nothing but a threaded class okay it can be anything right you can have a public class employee student or what not right but if you extends a thread class which means that that class we call it as a threaded class which means that particular um class or the object the task can be executed simultaneously this is feasibility we have now let me go and start writing the program you will understand how it works here okay let's start our hands dirty let me close all the programs so let me talk about multi threading right so define thread class demo okay so this is a typical just a skeleton i have right and let's say i want to have another class let's say i can say class my class okay here i can simply say um some methods right if i define any method here if i want to use this method in my main program what i can do i can create a class of object of this class and then using the object i can able to access the methods and variables right so here what i want to do here is i want to make i want to make this class as a thread class to make a threaded class by extends thread class okay what does it mean 
questions correct okay so in java control shift four Say. Oh, my class is already defined, so I can simply say my oh, that something like that. Okay, in Java, that is a class in Java. If you guys mouse over here, if you open the declaration, you can see public class thread which implements Thunderbird. Okay, so the Java developers start from JDK 1.0. They started creating class called thread. Okay, which implements random interface. In the upcoming classes, we will see. I mean, in the next session of the class, we will see what do you mean by random and how to use it. But now we will talk about how to use or how to define a thread using thread class. So what I say, like you know, public. Uh, sorry, my class extends thread class. So within the thread class, if you see, these are all variables and what not they created, right? And you can see one method called run method. Okay, so where is that run method? You have run methods, sweep methods, a lot of other things. Yeah. Let's say you want to actually override public void run here. Okay. So which means like whatever you are thinking about to perform, that has uh, has to be inside the run method, which is nothing but a job. Okay. So this particular thing, this particular thing, we call it as a job of a thread. Okay. Whatever you want to define, let's say I want to simply say for uh, programming purpose, I am simply say sys out. Uh, I can simply say inside child thread or something like that. Okay. Okay. Now this is nothing but job of a thread. Okay. So the the purpose of uh, the thread is to execute whatever is there inside the wide uh, run method. Okay. Now, in Java, whenever you write a class, whenever you write your main method, so it has to be executed, right? So how it will be executed? So JVM creates a thread for execute anything, right? So in order to execute this main method, JVM creates a thread, and that thread is responsible to execute this particular main method. That thread we call it as main thread. Okay. So in simply, I can say in every Java class. There should be at least one thread which is responsible to execute that particular job of a thread, job of a class, right? So whenever I say main thread, it's nothing but main class, main method, right? So even I can tell you like how to get the name of the current thread, which is nothing but a main thread. It will come up. Now what we are going to do here is how are we going to define a thread, right? So whenever I say define a thread, first thing is we are making our class as a thread class by doing Extends thread, right? Now we have defined our job also. Like let's say this job has to be executed by multiple threads, right? That is what it means. Now I want to create an object of this class. Let's say my own thread class. Let's say T C equal to new own my own thread class, right? Now if you see here, if you guys see here, I am using the same. How we did like new keyword, and then I can simply say by with the help of new keyword, we call it as object, object instantiation or object creation, right? So with respect to thread, we call that as a thread instantiation, okay? Because this class is actions thread class. That is why we call with the help of new keyword, we are actually instantiating the thread, okay? After you instantiate the thread, who is responsible to execute this particular line? Line number six. Line number six. This line is executed by main thread, isn't it? Because as I said earlier, this piece of code will be executed by main thread, right? So let's say this uh, line is executed main thread, which means like line number six, we have one thread exists. Now I want to make multiple threads. How you can make multiple threads is something, but You have to simply call start method. Okay, so I will tell you what I mean by start method. You can simply say tc dot start method. Okay, so you can see here tc is the object reference of this class, right? But you don't see start method here. 
you have only run method so then from where this is called getting called this tc is calling which start method it is internally calling extends thread class right which means it is calling the thread class start method only if you call start method it actually starts starts creating the thread which means it starts the okay they will ask you a question what will happen if i want to or how to start a thread in java you have to simply say start method and when you are you call the start method that internally calls run method that is how the logic has been written and that is why you have to call start method you can ask a question right why i need to call start method why can't i call run method directly tc dot run so the logic is that we are telling jvm that hey if i want to execute this piece of code i want to execute by another thread not by main thread because see if you see here line number 6 has been executed with main thread line number 7 has been executed by main thread right but if i want to tell jvm to create a thread and that thread has to be responsible to execute this job of uh, this particular piece of code then i need to tell jvm in such a way that jvm should understand okay kartik wants to execute this piece of code with the help of another thread not by using main thread so that logic is written by java developers saying that if anyone calls start method then jvm already uh, creates instance of thread right that particular thread will be started and that thread will be allocated by a job scheduler within the jvm and once it get allocated the memory and process what it does is like it will go and execute the run method okay that is how it works if you directly call the run method you can also call the run method it will work but it won't be executed by the new thread internally it will use the same main thread okay so what does it mean like only if you call a thread method it will it is going to start thread so at the line number 8 you will see two threads here okay one thread is for whatever you created by this class another thread is still main thread okay that is why i put it here saying this line when you guys execute this line you will see only one one thread which is the main thread but the moment you start the thread right you will see two threads one is main thread another one is child thread uh, i think we are running out of time maybe we can join back uh, nitya within two minutes yeah yes karthik yeah thank you um so here what i was trying to explain is um at the line number 7 you are having two threads right so one thread we call it as a main thread the thread which you actually created or started that thread we call it as child thread it is something like a we can't relate like a inheritance kind of stuff but which of the thread is actually making another thread that the thread which is creating the thread is called like uh, main thread and the thread which is getting created that thread we call it as a child thread that's all okay so here two threads are getting created and you will see which thread is going to execute this one and which thread is going to execute this piece of code so i want to see let's say after line number 7 right i am saying that there are two two threads are there right but the line number 9 will be executed by main thread the reason is that always main thread will be responsible to execute the main method and the line number 6 is by main thread and line number 7 you are actually creating a thread right like you are actually starting a thread but this line number 7 is also executed by main thread only right but after line number 7 once the thread gets started so whenever you call tc dot start it internally calls start method of thread class and that internally calls run method so whenever this line number 21 is getting executed this line number 21 or this line number 22 22 this piece of code has been executed by a thread called tc or we can call it as a child thread okay once the particular job of a thread is completed then the thread is going to be no more okay that is the thumb rule what happens is we are starting a thread the thread is going to execute a job so once the job has been completed then the scope of the thread is no more then what happens after line number 8 you will see only one thread which is nothing but main thread right and if i say simply sys out here in this line number 9 you will see let's say inside main thread right inside main thread okay we'll see what happens here which thread is going to execute this one
okay so i am saying this line is executed by the main thread basically it starts a thread and also this also got executed by main thread but it creates another thread okay let me go and underscore up okay you are saying inside main thread and then inside child thread and let me run it again main then child main and then child main and then child See if you see now child and then main. Right? Let me go back. Yeah, you see here first time it it executes child and then main. So what happens here is as I said here, there are two threads getting created. One thread is main thread. The other one is whatever you are creating it, and you are starting the thread which you are creating it. So whenever a thread is getting created by JVM, so JVM will allocate the job scheduler. Like JVM job scheduler will be there, and each thread will be assigned a job. Which means like each job of a thread can be assigned by a scheduler. Based on which one is getting precedence, it will be executed. So whenever I see like inside child thread and then inside main thread, what happens is when the line number seven gets executed, TC dot start, it calls the start method of thread class that internally calls run method, and within that like it it actually executes the line number twenty two, and then the job got aligned, aligned the thread got aligned the main thread again. Got aligned to a particular job scheduler, and which executes line number nine. That is why you are seeing first child and then main. Okay, so this is okay. Now for simple use case, it is okay. You can see that you are able to create a thread and you are able to execute by different ways. But as a developer, whenever you want to execute something, you should know how or which has to execute first or which has to execute last or whatever the things, right? So in that case, you are going to define a priority which has to be executed. But this is purely based on the processor. Let's say you are using Intel Core processor or you are using some Apple processor or whatnot. So based on the processor, how it is going to use the JVM to allocate a process ID for each uh, uh, thread in the job scheduler, it is going to take a precedence. Okay. And yeah, is it clear now? Like how this code works? Yeah. Yes, sir. I think it's clear. Perfect. Uh, let me go back to the slide. um so this is what what we have and uh, this is exactly what i have written here like your class section thread class and you are able to define a job and from your main class you are able to start a thread so this piece of code line number 7 we call it as thread instantiation and once you start you will be starting this one and this line is executed by the main thread right you will see a different uh, answers let's say one time child and then main or main and child it all depends on uh, the particular time when job scheduler allocates Which job, uh, which thread has to execute? Okay, so the output is not consistent. That's all I'm saying. Now we are going to see the other way of implementing uh, thread. Okay, defining a thread. So the other way of defining a thread is something but by using random interface. Whatever you did here, exactly same. You are going to do it, but there is a difference in the way of writing a code. Okay, the concept is same, but how we are going to write a code is different. So for that, I am going to create another class called. Runnable interface demo. Okay, so let me close this console. Okay, here what I'm trying to do here exactly like how I want to do it. Same thing. Let's say I'm creating a class, and I can simply say my own runnable class. Okay, and as I said here, if I want to make my class as a third class, there are two ways that you can do. One is by extends that class. Other one is by implements runnable interface. So implements runnable interface. Also, we have seen that earlier. Okay, already we have seen something like you know thread class is a class which already implements runnable interface. So in this second scenario, we are using directly implementing the runnable interface itself. Whenever you try to implement some interface, you have to you must have to have um, implement those methods, right? So that is why I'm saying like it has to be implemented. So if I go to the runnable interface, you see here it's not just nothing but an interface, okay? And we will see what do you mean by function interface in Java. In Java 1.8, uh, we have seen a different uh, different uh, concept altogether. Um, so in our case now we are looking at like 
how to use runnable interface right so i can simply say my class implements runnable interface then i have to define a job here right so that job actually i can define simply say same like how we did in the previous example this is out i can simply say inside child thread or something like that okay now what i should do here is i need to create a class and an object of this and then i have to do it right so let's say if i simply say this one run is equal to new my class of right so what you did here is just you call it right but but how you can make a thread to get started with the help of start method right so start method is not there in the runnable interface isn't it if you see here runnable interface doesn't have start method so then definitely you cannot simply say you know a run dot start right let me try run dot start if you say there is no method like that isn't it you can simply call run method right run dot run or i can simply say or provided then okay and name it that as or okay you don't have start method here but how you can define a thread with the help of starting a thread means something but t dot start or whatever the class which you are referring you have to call start method right so for that what you have to do you can simply say let's say thread t equal to new thread of okay because thread is a class right you can also create a job object of the class right you say here then you can call t dot start okay now i will tell you one thing what happens here so we know that we have a class we have a public uh, static void main method is nothing but it will be executed by main thread so main thread is the one who is going to execute line number 6 it is the main thread is going to execute line number 8 right so here if you see you are able to instantiate the thread here right you are able to instantiate the thread right with the help of new keyword where you are trying to have uh implemented class right like another inter interface now what you do here is thread t equal to new thread of here also you are instantiate here also you are going to instantiate a thread right with the help of new keyword right so you are creating actually two threads but you are not even starting this thread at all isn't it you are creating a thread but you are not actually using it and here also you are creating a thread but here you are actually starting a thread okay so here you are starting a thread now let me ask you one thing if i simply say this out this simply says this out and say that inside main method now i want to know whether this run method will get called or not any idea it won't get called we call simply call only inside main method the reason is that you are creating a thread plus object and you are calling t dot start but this thread whatever you are creating or whatever you are starting is not related to this particular implement class what you are defining here is it so now we have to know how to make your runnable implemented class to be tied up with thread class what you can do here First, you create an object, right? Object of this particular class, right? You have to make this one here. You have to pass the runnable object to threads constructor so that this thread will be using this runnable interface. Then it will call this thread start method. That internally calls run method. Now let me go and underscore. Yeah, if you see child method, child thread as well as main thread, and exactly it will work the same way. Okay, it will be different for use case. Let's say. one time it will say child and thread child and main and sometimes it will say main and child so it is similar to the exactly what we have seen the queue yeah main and child it is all because of how the job scheduler within the jvm is going to allocate or which thread has to execute first okay so here what happens is here you are creating a thread right and uh, you are instantiating a thread and then you are again uh, you are creating a thread and then here you are actually starting a thread all right only if you pass this runnable object right to a thread class constructor only then this will be considered or this particular class will be considered or it will be using it will actually implement a run multi threading otherwise you can create multiple threads it's not like multi threading multiple threading means something but 
multiple threads will work on the same job at the same time right it's not something like if your class has multiple threads we can call it as multi threading no multi threading means your multiple threads can be graded and each thread has to work or has to run at the same time right here what happens you are creating a thread you are creating a thread and then you are just simply starting it but it is not doing any job because you are not defining any job to the thread right so that is why i said like these two piece of code let's say line number 8 is executed by uh, line number i mean main thread and similarly p dot start means you are starting a thread or the line number 9 or after 10 after 9 there are two threads exist here two threads exist one is main thread other one is the child thread okay we will see what are the different life cycle of a thread where it will be let's say uh the life cycle of a thread will be a new runnable running kind of stuff okay when you go to the life cycle or states life cycle or uh, state of a thread but now you have to understand that like uh, after like line number 9 get executed you will see in the line number 10 there are two threads are running or exists okay which is nothing but one is main thread other one is child thread so of course the main thread is going to execute the line number 12 and child thread has to execute whatever the thread job which is nothing but job of a thread is nothing but run method so this has been executed by line uh, line number 22 has been executed by child thread so now let me do one thing i will simply say thread dot get current thread dot get name i want to print right what is the current thread name or the line number 6 i want to show you guys to see whatever it said the proof of concept so here i am printing what is the current thread's name at the line number 6 let me go and this for so the thing but main okay nothing but main exactly i am going to to see what is the current thread which is responsible or which is actually executing the run method the job right here i will say child method or run inside run method i right? can simply say run method like that okay you guys see here run method the thread name is nothing but thread hyphen 0 so what does it mean jvm created a thread here and it it assigned the job and this particular job has been executed by a thread called thread hyphen 0 so which means thread hyphen 0 thread hyphen 1 2 3 like that it will create right as long as you have like a uh, 100 threads you want to create it you will have 0 to 99 okay so here it gets one thread which is nothing but thread hyphen 0 you can also set the name or you can also get the name by this but as a proof of concept i was telling i am displaying like what is the current thread is in this particular line of code and what is the current thread responsible for and after you did this right let me print it again at the line number 30 i want to see all right let me run this one you see main because once the thread is uh, job of the thread is completed then that scope of the thread is no more right it will go to dead state okay so that is why you see line number 14 is also only one thread exists which is nothing but a main thread which is a current thread is a main thread and that is responsible to execute line number 615 okay so this is all about like how to use runnable interface to define a thread and how to use uh, extending a thread class to implement the runnable uh, uh, multi threading okay so these are the two concepts which i want to explain today by looking at like say implements and double or uh, extends uh, thread class okay so definitely in java uh, if you go for any interview they might be asking you uh, if you say like you know multi threading they will ask you like how you can define a multi threading you can answer let's say i can do by implementing a runnable interface or extending a thread class then they will ask okay there are two options you have and two options are doing the same thing which one you prefer right so in general in general in the programming paradigm of like how you design a program 
always go by interface okay because interface is nothing but a specification right and moreover you are not defining what to do right uh, you are defining what to do but not how to do which means like you can implement in your own way if you define by if you go by interface so if you go by thread class you don't have an option right you have to simply stick to that but if you go for interface let's say runnable interface there are two things right one is you are giving only specification second thing is that assume that if your class wants to uh, get or inherit some features from different class also you want to implement runnable or you want to implement a threading concept so only with the help of interface only you can define it. because if your class uh, implements runnable interface then you can also implement another interface as well but if you define or if you define your multi threaded environment with the help of extending thread class you won't be able to extend another class right so which means like multiple inheritance is not possible in java with respect to class but at the same time if you want to uh, inherit from more than one interface in java which is possible which is nothing but implements interface one comma interface two you can do it but only if you make it like with the help of runnable uh, interface extension or whatever you do only then you can have more feature of or options to implement from another interface as well or what not you can do it but with the help of uh, uh, extending a thread class you will you are actually uh, stopping your feature or stopping your uh, enhancements to do implement from some other interface so always prefer to go by implementing another interface if they ask why you have to explain in such a way that you are telling them like how interface implementing interface will give you feature or how extending a class will give you a real time uh, benefits so that's how we have to explain it's not about like just for entry aspect even when you write your program when you want to make it in the runnable or uh, multi thread environment you have to go for implementing runnable interface so this is all about like what we have seen today so we have seen about like what is task and what is multi task and what are different types of multi tasking now process based uh, thread based and then we have seen about like what is thread and what do you mean by multi threading and also we have seen like how to define a thread with respect to extending a thread class and with respect to implementing a runnable interface so these these are the topics which we covered um now maybe uh nitya if you don't uh, have uh, like any clarity about some concept then let me know i will explain now i'm clear about this topic karthik okay so uh i i am not sure like whether you guys follow to uh do the do the assignments the previous concepts but uh, at least for multi threading irrespective of whatever you did so far like whether you is able to spend some time in doing the assignments in the before classes i would strongly recommend to uh do the assignment with respect to multi threading only then you will feel the difference of multi threading okay otherwise it's very very difficult to you will understand but you won't be able to see how it actually uh, see the difference right multi threading and non multi thread environment see the moment i write it here right to see what is the current thread it is showing you can able to see okay kartik is showing okay line number 6 the current thread is nothing but main but line number 22 or 25 the current thread is not main right which means like thread class thread hyphen 0 so this is a proof of concepts right only if you write the same thing in your program and see how it works then you will get into a conclusion that okay this is how it actually works okay i strongly recommend Uh, and here to start with this one at least for uh, start from multi threading only then you will have more question than i can able to help you out more which will help you in uh, all aspects yes yeah sure kartik i will work on this one okay thank you so much don't worry about like uh, all the assignments with respect to a previous section but multi threading assignments are uh, like uh, entirely separate right we are not dealing anything with collection or any other previous concepts right we are all deal with uh, how multi threading works all right uh, so we will tomorrow our focus is on uh, the day number 37 our focus is on uh, how to overload the run method how to override the start method what will happen if i try to do that and uh, how to restart a thread in java okay so we will see all this concept tomorrow if we don't have any question uh, yeah maybe we can join tomorrow and then we'll go from there yeah okay kartik We'll connect tomorrow. And uh, have a good day. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.